Dream Chaser was declared dead. NASA rejected it in 2014. Workers got laid off. The company nearly collapsed. But here's the twist. This failed space plane just passed all final tests and is launching in months. While everyone watches SpaceX rockets explode and splash into oceans, Dream Chaser lands on runways like a regular airplane. No crashes, no parachutes, just smooth landings. The numbers are insane. 3,500 kilograms to space. Experiments return safer than your morning drive. So what changed? How did a rejected project become NASA's secret weapon? And why are they keeping this so quiet? Let's dive right in. Picture this. 2014. Sierra Nevada Corporation thought they had it made. Years of work. Millions of dollars. A space plane so advanced it made science fiction look real. Dream Chaser wasn't just another spacecraft. It was based on NASA's own HL-20 concept from the 1990s. Sleek, innovative, and it promised something revolutionary. Airplane-style landings in space. Then came the phone call that destroyed everything. NASA announced their commercial crew program winners. SpaceX's Dragon? Selected. Boeing Starliner? Selected. Dream Chaser? Completely. Shut. Outside. The rejection hit like a sledgehammer. NASA's reasoning? Capsules were simpler and safer to develop. In other words, your space plane is too risky, too complicated, too different. Sierra Nevada didn't just lose a contract that day. They lost their entire future. Pink slips went out. Funding evaporated. Desperate executives filed a formal protest with the U.S. government begging them to overturn the decision. Most companies would have died right there. But sometimes, the most brutal failures create the most incredible comebacks. While their competitors celebrated, Sierra Nevada was plotting something brilliant. If NASA didn't want Dream Chaser for people, maybe they'd want it for cargo. The company unveiled their master stroke, Dream Chaser Cargo. Same sleek space plane, same runway landings, but completely redesigned for a different mission. Gone were the life support systems. Gone were the crew compartments. In their place, a detachable cargo module called Shooting Star. The concept was pure genius. Dream Chaser launches with this disposable module attached, delivers cargo to the space station, returns to Earth safely. Meanwhile, Shooting Star burns up with the station's trash. Think of it like a reusable delivery truck with a disposable trailer. But would NASA take the bait? They'd already rejected Dream Chaser once. The wounds were still fresh. Trust was shattered. Why would this time be any different? The moment of truth. NASA's Commercial Resupply Services 2 program announced their selections. The phone rang at Sierra Nevada headquarters. Dream Chaser was in. Seven missions. Hundreds of millions of dollars. The failed space plane suddenly had a lifeline. But winning the contract was just the beginning of their nightmare. Now they had to actually build this thing. And that's where the real disaster started. Think about the engineering challenge here. You're building a spacecraft that's part airplane, part rocket, part space station. Every single component has to work perfectly in the vacuum of space and the thick atmosphere of Earth. The margin for error? Zero. One mistake could kill the entire program. Edwards Air Force Base. The moment every engineer dreads. Dream Chaser was gliding toward the runway. Systems working perfectly. Aerodynamics flawless. Everything looked textbook perfect. Then, disaster. The left landing gear refused to deploy. The space plane hit the runway hard. Skidded off the tarmac. Millions of dollars of work. Destroyed in seconds. Years of development. Gone. The media had a field day. Dream chaser crashes. Space plane failure. Another aerospace disaster. But here's the shocking twist. The crash actually proved the design worked. Flight data revealed something incredible. The guidance systems? Perfect. The software? Flawless. The aerodynamics? Exactly as predicted. The problem wasn't the space plane. It was one tiny component. A repurposed aircraft part that was never meant for the final design. Sierra Space learned a brutal lesson that day. In spaceflight, every single component matters. They switched to electric actuators, redesigned the entire landing system. 
By 2017, successful glide tests proved they'd conquered the problem, but the crash raised a terrifying question. If they couldn't get landing gear right, how could they handle the life and death complexities of space? Landing gear was just the beginning. The real nightmare? The materials themselves. Dream Chaser's body uses advanced composite materials, incredibly strong, incredibly light, and incredibly difficult to manufacture. The thermal protection system, even worse. Silica tiles and high-tech ceramics that must survive temperature swings from minus 150 degrees to plus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. These aren't materials you can just order online. Each component requires specialized manufacturing, extensive testing, NASA certification that takes months. One faulty tile during re-entry, catastrophic failure, total loss of vehicle. The manufacturing process became a bottleneck. Every delay in materials meant delays in testing. Every testing failure meant complete redesigns. Critics started whispering, will Dream Chaser ever actually fly? But the real disaster was still coming. By 2020, Dream Chaser was finally ready. Spacecraft tested, cargo module complete. Sierra Space was confident they could meet their 2021 launch date. There was just one tiny problem. They had no rocket. Dream Chaser was designed to launch on ULA's brand new Vulcan Centaur rocket. But Vulcan hit massive delays, engine problems, supply chain disasters, COVID-19 disruptions. The rocket's first flight got pushed from 2021 to 2024. Without Vulcan, Dream Chaser was literally grounded. They'd built the perfect spacecraft with nowhere to go. It was like having a Formula One race car with no racetrack. Even worse, when Vulcan finally flew in January 2024, Dream Chaser still couldn't launch. ULA prioritized a military payload for certification. The space plane got bumped to a later slot. Every month of waiting meant more costs, more uncertainty, more questions about whether the program would survive. Sierra Space was burning through money with no end in sight. While waiting for their rocket, Sierra Space didn't waste a single day. They put Dream Chaser through the most brutal testing program in commercial spaceflight history. First up, the world's most powerful spacecraft shaker. This machine generates forces so extreme, they can literally shake bolts loose from solid steel. Dream Chaser and its shooting star module were strapped down. The machine roared to life. Vibrations that would destroy most vehicles, Dream Chaser held together perfectly. Next came thermal vacuum testing. The spacecraft was sealed in a chamber that simulates space conditions. Temperature swings from the frozen darkness of Earth's shadow to the scorching heat of direct sunlight. Most materials would crack, warp, fail completely. Dream Chaser survived every test, but the most critical examination was called Joint Test 10B. This wasn't about survival, it was about performance. Could Dream Chaser power on in space? Could it keep its cargo bay cool? Could it interface with delicate research equipment worth millions of dollars? The spacecraft successfully powered specialized cryogenic research modules from pharmaceutical giant Merck. Equipment so sensitive that one degree of temperature change could destroy years of research. These weren't just engineering tests. They were validation that Dream Chaser could deliver on its revolutionary promises. But would it actually work in the real world? Here's what makes Dream Chaser truly revolutionary. It's not just about gentle landings. The real advantage? Time. When SpaceX's Dragon capsule returns from space, it splashes into the ocean. Recovery teams spend hours fishing it out, transport it to shore, extract the precious cargo. Sensitive experiments get damaged by salt water. Delays rough handling. Dream Chaser? It lands on a runway and can be unloaded in 20 minutes. For biological samples, medical experiments, time-sensitive research, those hours are the difference between breakthrough discoveries and ruined data. The space plane also subjects cargo to less than 1.5 G-forces during re-entry. That's gentler than most elevator rides. Compare that to capsule landings that can exceed 4 Gs. That's like being in a car accident. Every single time. But here's the question nobody's asking. If Dream Chaser is so superior, why did it take 13 years to fly? May 2024. Kennedy Space Center. 
Dream Chaser finally arrived for its date with destiny. The spacecraft, now named Tenacity, entered final preparations. The mission designation? SSC Demo-1. The cargo? 3,500 kilograms. That's roughly the weight of two cars, packed into a vehicle smaller than a fighter jet. But this isn't just a delivery run, it's a complete system demonstration. Dream Chaser must prove it can launch, orbit, dock, deliver cargo, and return safely. Every phase must work perfectly. One mistake, one system failure, one unexpected problem, and the entire program gets canceled. NASA is watching. The commercial space industry is watching. Competitors are hoping for failure. Sierra Space knows they won't get a second chance. Dream Chaser represents something bigger than just another spacecraft. For decades, the space industry has been dominated by two philosophies, explosive rockets and splashing capsules. Dream Chaser offers a third way, precision, reusability, airplane-like operations. If successful, it changes how we think about space transportation. Instead of dramatic ocean recoveries, routine runway landings. Instead of one-size-fits-all capsules, specialized vehicles for specific missions. But the implications go beyond cargo delivery. Sierra Space is already developing a crew version called DC-200. Seven astronauts, routine space access, inflatable space habitats, entire orbital ecosystems. The question is, will Dream Chaser's first flight prove that 13 years of failures were worth it? Or will it join the long list of promising spacecraft that never quite worked? Here's something that might shock you. Dream Chaser's very first mission includes a cancer research experiment with pharmaceutical giant Merck. The experiment requires perfect microgravity conditions, combined with the gentle return that only Dream Chaser can provide. This research could lead to new cancer treatments, therapies that save thousands of lives. This isn't just about space technology. It's about using space to solve problems here on Earth. But success isn't guaranteed. The spacecraft still needs to prove it can handle orbital operations, docking procedures, autonomous return flights, one mistake, one system failure, one unexpected problem, and years of work get destroyed in minutes. The launch window is approaching fast. After 13 years of setbacks, delays, near disasters, Dream Chaser is finally ready for its moment of truth. Will this be aerospace's greatest comeback story or its most expensive failure? So here we are, 13 years of failures, crashes, and rejections, all leading to this moment. Dream Chaser isn't just another spacecraft. It's proof that sometimes the most impossible ideas are exactly what the future needs. While everyone's focused on rockets exploding and capsules splashing, Sierra Space quietly built something revolutionary, a space plane that lands like your morning commute. But here's what really matters. This isn't just about cargo delivery. It's about changing how we think about space access, making it routine, predictable, almost boring. And if Dream Chaser succeeds, we might be looking at the beginning of a completely new space age, one where going to orbit feels as normal as catching a flight to another city. But that's just the beginning of this story, because Sierra Space has bigger plans. Way bigger. Want to know what they're really building up there? What comes after Dream Chaser changes everything? Hit that subscribe button, because next week, we're diving into their secret space station project that makes the ISS look like a toy. The question is, are you ready for what space really becomes next? Let me know in the comments. Do you think Dream Chaser will finally prove the doubters wrong? See you in the next one, Space Explorers. Starship Flight 9's payload door got stuck halfway open. Mission failed, but Elon Musk just revealed why it happened, and his fix is brilliant. Here's the problem. When you're moving at 17,000 miles per hour in space, even tiny metal parts shift. What worked perfectly on Earth becomes impossible to move in zero gravity. The piez dispenser door that was supposed to deploy 100 tons of payload? It jammed. But here's what's genius about Musk's solution. He's not just fixing a door, 
He's creating a completely new deployment system that will work for everything from Starlink satellites to Mars rovers. Why does this matter? Because SpaceX is launching five Mars missions next year. If they can't get cargo out of Starship, the entire Mars colonization plan dies. But if this new system works, we're looking at the key to becoming a multiplanetary species. So what exactly is Musk's brilliant solution? Let's dive right in. Flight 9 had just cleared second engine cutoff. Mission control was celebrating. Engineers were high-fiving. Everything looked perfect. Then, the Piaz dispenser door began its opening sequence, and it froze. Not completely closed, not fully open. Stuck halfway like a broken vending machine in space. This wasn't just embarrassing. This was a $3 billion engineering nightmare that threatened to kill Mars colonization before it even started. But here's what makes this failure absolutely